Hello and welcome to Alexpo and today we're going to talk about the championship. The new season is underway and just like the Premier League we've got a fancy new simulation where we can simulate the new season perfectly, well, kind of perfectly. I've had to do the transfers myself but I suppose I've got to get my money's worth after spending 4 quid on the in-game editor and the promoted teams aren't quite right. With the database I downloaded it just automatically picks who went up from League 1 which is kind of how the AFL did it anyway. So coming up we've got MK Don, Sunderland and Shrewsbury instead of Coventry, Rotherham and Wickham. But ignore that, we're in too deep now. So here we go, let's simulate one year into the future and let Football Manager 2020 predict the 2020-21 Championship table. 24th MK Dons Bottom of the league for the team that shouldn't even be there in the first place, MK Dons were nowhere near survival, ending the campaign with just 32 points. And half of one I'm glad, sneaking in here trying to ruin my simulation, shame on you MK Dons, worst thing you've ever done. 23rd Shrewsbury And shame on Shrewsbury as well, you don't belong here, get back to League 1 where you should be. To be fair to them, they were only one point of drift of survival, so at least they were almost competent in the second tier. 22nd Barnsley Our third relegated team are actually one competing in the championship this season, and one I think might go down after dramatically surviving on the final day last time out. There was no such drama this time for the Tykes, who would have stayed up had they beaten Borough on the final day. But alas, it ended 1-0 and they're back in the third tier. And to think, Corley Woodrow scored those 17 goals for nothing. 21st, Sheffield Wednesday. Yes, Sheffield Wednesday have done it. Despite being docked 12 points, the Owls are safe. But only just. Wednesday survived by just a point, with the dramatic final day win over Huddersfield securing their championship status. And to think, if they hadn't been docked points, they would have been as high as 10th. 20th Blackburn Rovers With 53 points Blackburn were 20th, just clear of the drop, but they were able to survive despite getting Tony Morbury the sack. The man with the best car impression got the sack in November, with wily old veteran Martin O'Neill coming in to save the day. Christ this game's unrealistic. 19th QPR QPR are another team that avoided the drop narrowly, setting 5 points above Barnsley, and like Blackburn, they also had a change of manager to secure their safety. Mark Warburton got the boot in late 2020, with Chris Ramsey getting the interim job and keeping them up. Now I assume that's the Chris Ramsey that actually works at QBR, not the South Shields comedian who loves his bike, hashtag bike guy. 18th Birmingham A Jude bellingham -less Birmingham were able to come 18th which wasn't enough out to crank it to save his job, but my biggest gripe is that he didn't play Jonathan Aleko once. I paid money to get the in-game edit right there, and you're just pissing it down the pan. I'm glad you got sacked. Good riddance. 17th Middlesbrough the downward spiral of Middlesbrough Football Club continues, with the Borough once again finishing 17th. And like so many others, the sacked a manager. Neil Warnock got sent back to the wife, so Borough rolled up the chinos, dusted off the Darwin D's album, and took it all the way back to 2010 and appointed Tony Mowbray. 16th Luton The Hatters have stayed up for the second season in a row, and they've got two Liverpool loanies to thank. They added Seth Van Den Berg and Key Jan Hoover to their squad, and their incredible ability and desire to win got them over the line. Ok, maybe he's not. Kian Hoover did alright, but Van den Berg barely played. I suppose it was the 17 James Collins goals that got the job done. 15th Millwall Dirty Millwall went really dirty this season, as they brought in the dirtiest manager of the lot, Tony Pulis. They also brought in Maxim Chupo Motting, who doesn't really strike me as a Tony Pulis player. Troy Parrott did well though, netting 12 goals during his loan spell from Spurs. 14th Stoke while they didn't have Lionel Messi like in another video, Stoke did at least avoid administration and subsequent relegation, so I guess you could say this video has gone much better for the Potters. Check out our What If Lionel Messi Joined Stoke video if you haven't already. Personally, I think it's great. 13th Derby Despite being a contender for promotion for many, Derby were nowhere near a return to the promised land, with Wayne Rooney unable to drag the Rams to the top. In fact, they were 11 points short, rounding off the bottom half. 12th Sunderland the Black Cats were the third incorrect team promoted from League One, and they were actually able to survive and do pretty well. They brought back Alan Hutton, they got Eric Garcia in on loan, they even appointed Mark Hughes as manager. I don't know why Phil Parkinson got the sack like, I suppose we'll have to wait until the next Netflix series to find out. 11th Nottingham Forest Another promotion contender way off the pace, at least they were ahead of Derby County, that's the main thing, right Forest fans? Like pretty much every team in this sudden division they sacked the manager and replaced Lamucci with big Sam Allardyce who must have resigned from his job at Soccer Aid. Maybe he couldn't cope with the Eagles. 10th Huddersfield Town Three cheers for the Terriers because they didn't sack their manager. In the end they came 10th, 8 points adrift to the playoffs but if it hadn't been for such a lull over the winter period they may have been seeing Huddersfield back in the Premier League. 
9th Preston. Yet again, Preston came close to reaching the playoffs, but not close enough, and this year was even more shocking. That's because they had a different manager, a man who once got an 8 year contract because he was so good. He's the best dancer on the touchline, a silver fox, he's sexy and he knows it, that's right, Pardiola, Alan Pardew. And they still didn't go up, unbelievable. 8th Bristol City. Three points off the playoffs, Bristol City won the most exciting teams in the championship this season and they actually threw away their chance of promotion. They led the way in the opening weeks but totally collapsed to resign themselves to another year in the championship. 7th Reading. Goal difference forced Reading to miss out on the top six but while Bristol threw away promotion by collapsing it was a horrendously slow start that cost the Royals. 6th Cardiff City. We move into the playoffs and a 2-2 draw on the final day was enough to get the Welsh side a shot of promotion but we'll come to the playoffs later. 5th Watford We've got our first team relegated from the Premier League here and 5th was the best Watford could do and like Cardiff it was only goal difference that actually got them into the playoffs. But while many teams have got managers who've been around the block Watford have got bloody Kike Setien. I mean that's madness why would you appoint him after he lost 8-2 to Bayern Munich? 4th Swansea for the second year in a row, Swansea finished in the top six and one of the big reasons was the arrival of Morgan Gibbs-White. The Wolves' loanee was a creative force on wheels, bagging 17 assists which is more than anyone else in the entire division. Third, Brentford. For the second year in a row, Brentford came third, but at least this time they didn't piss away automatic promotion in the final few games. Mbumo and Ben Rama were fantastic once again, but there are two big shocks in this team. They signed Daniel Sturridge on a free which just doesn't fit their transfer model and then they brought in Chris Hutton as manager. Honestly, why is everyone in this simulation sack of managers? Have some loyalty for Christ's sake. Second, Norwich. We'll come back to the playoffs at the end but our first promoted side are Norwich City with 92 points. I mean this is no surprise, they're just a yo-yo club like West Brom. The Canaries cut a lot of the squad that got relegated although Todd Cantwell did go in January for a huge 35 million quid at Sheffield United. It didn't matter though as Norwich were able to come second and secure a return at the top flight. And first Bournemouth. Yes the Cherries won the league even without Eddie Howe and they did so after keeping a hold of some big players like Josh King and David Brooks. But the biggest name to arrive was Luis Suarez. He got the golden boot too netting 18 goals. Oh wait hang on it's a different Luis Suarez. This one's Colombian was on loan from Watford. Ah well maybe the Hornets should have kept him. He might have won them promotion instead. So we move on to the playoffs with Cardiff taking on Brentford and Swansea facing Watford. In the first playoff it was third place Brentford who secured their place at Wembley, easing past Cardiff 4-1 on aggregate. The second one was a much closer affair but it was Watford who made it to the final, meaning all three relegated clubs could come straight back up. But alas no, it was Brentford who got the job done, beating Watford 2-1 at Wembley with Saeed Ben Rama bagging the winner. They've banished the ghost of 2020, Brentford have navigated the playoffs and are a Premier League club for the first time ever, which means, like it should be, the top three teams in the league secured promotion. So there we have it, that's this season's championship table according to Football Manager 2020. Let us know what you think in the comments down below, as always don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo and until next time we will see you around.